voice actors for Rebecca Walsey of Rich. I know, I, I, I want to look for the orange and white, and I just figured it went really well. Dude, you're more like a little bit of a Mine is black. Guess who wears pants up here? <laughs> <laughs> does, everybody, does everybody familiar with what the three of us have done, who we are, or are you looking at us like, who the heck are these guys? Do you have any questions? Oh, well, let's start. Uh, do you have any questions? Specifically about our background, who we are, where we came from, and everything. We start with that, and once we get out of the way, who are we and why are we qualified to talk about it, then we can move on from there. So, uh, any questions about that? Here's one. Who are you and why are you qualified to talk about it? Don't you remember that there's a show in the audience? Well, uh, speaking for Michael and myself, we. Uh, <laughs> We have a long and checkered career with anime, to put it mildly, and with games as well. There's the checkers, even chess. Uh, actually, we started back in the days of Robotech. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Long time ago. Long live Harmony Gold. Long live Harmony Gold. That was even before Robotech. Yeah. Before <laughs> the invention of television. That's the original <laughs> Captain <laughs> Harlock there, guys. That's how old we are. Oh. You know, the, so the thing about it is that we, we've been in animation before the word anime was invented. It was just Japanese animation that was being brought over to be dubbed like any other dubbed product. And when I finally saw the word anime, I went to him and said, what's anime? <laughs> he said, anime? Oh, I, you've been doing that for years, really? <laughs> so the phenomenon started literally from nowhere and nothing. It was just a lot of strange stuff that was coming over and we were like, all right, we'll dump anything. And years later, here we are. Guys, you, you've given us a career. It, it, no, seriously, we, 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 we owe you guys everything. Without you, we'd uh, still be looking for jobs back in LA. We love you, man. We love you, man. And let me, uh, let it continue rolling downhill. How do you justify your existence? <laughs> I'm struggling with that every day. <laughs> Struggle in public. I have never done a professional role in my life. I have done everything most of the other way, I know. But, uh, got a million, billions of views on our videos that I take part in writing, so... And I gotta get that, so... <laughs> You want to just go one, two, three down the road? Sure. Uh, well, if you come to our master class tomorrow, you're going to hear us say over and over and over again, if you want to be a voice actor, first be an actor. First be an actor. And then voice acting is just one of the many things that you will do. And that's what we were. We were actors. Uh, in fact, oddly enough, the two of us did not meet doing uh, voice work. We met doing a live action stunt show at Universal Studios tour called The Adventures of Conan, a sword and sorcery spectacular. Woohoo! <laughs> he was the original evil Tower of Mordor, and I was the original Red Sonia. And oh my goodness, it just shows you uh, we were actors, we were sword fighters, we were stunt people. If you're in the business, you do all our aspects of it. Our, our, it was great because we did very much a same sort of thing. Um, she came down a 40 foot rope to make her entrance, and I did an 8 foot with my fault. I wore about 22 pounds of monkey fur and lame. She had 4 ounces of suede. You know what it's like to go home to your mother and hold in your hand this lump of suede and say, Hi, Mom, these are my work clothes. <laughs> I had a friend who used to do the same role that I did because there were three or four casts that rotated through and she actually did a comedy routine where she, she said she was given this thing and she didn't even know what it was. She thought it was a hat. <laughs> she had suede hanging all over her head. Still didn't fit. Still didn't fit. Uh, yeah, we, we were working with, uh, he did the high fall four or five times a day. We did a big sword fight. We were dealing with lasers and explosions and pyrotechnics. 
And that show burned up actors like it was going out of style. We had a medical file that thick and the show hadn't opened yet. And actually, before I was an actor, I was a combat correspondent in the Marine Corps. So, Which yeah. is good training for something, but I couldn't begin to tell you what. <laughs> well, actually, that stuff led him to radio, which led him into voice work. So, yeah. And I still, I still uh, work a job. I make elevator progress. Yes! He oh, keeps okay. the world safe! I do. He does stuff that actually means something. <laughs> 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 the rest of us, we live in, you know, cotton candy land. Uh, yeah. You yeah, I've got a couple questions for Michael. Um, the people at the Tails Namco board have been wondering this for some time. The, the first question is, who did in Tales of the Abyss? Who did the voice of Tear? Oh, you were talking about this before the convention. No, you 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 posted that you were going to ask the question, and regret to inform, I haven't the foggiest notion. Okay. When we're recording, when we're doing this anime, we never work with other actors. Many times we never see anyone else on the show at all except for the director. It's just us alone, and boy, is that interesting when you're doing a love scene. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, My, I, never mind, we'll talk about that tomorrow, too. I believe I was Van. More than that, I cannot tell you. Okay. Um, my other question, what was it like playing Van in Tales of the Abyss and Fusoya in Final Fantasy IV? Was I that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think we're kidding? It's some of the crib sheet. We don't remember. Okay, um, I, I believe I was Van, and that's honestly about as far as I can go. And, and um, Tales of, what was the other one? T Final Fantasy IV, Fusoya. Oh, Final Fantasy IV. And, uh, what did he do? <laughs> he, was, he was a magician that, w from the moon. He joins your party late in the game. Uh, okay, there we are. Hey, I was in that! <laughs> cool! Who knew? Oh, oh, so, yeah. oh, well, also, Kanyatsu and uh, Xerox. Hey, I'm pretty good. <laughs> You know, you think you're kidding, but with having been in the business for 25 or 30 years, you do not remember all the jobs you did. You don't. I, I wish I could give you some information, and I'm sorry, a lot of people ask me, you know, what, what is the favorite, what is your favorite anime, or what is your favorite game to play? And oh, no. I tell you the truth, I don't watch anime. <laughs> I don't play games. <laughs> That's where I work. <laughs> if your father is an accountant, does he go home and do taxes to relax? <laughs> no. Um, unfortunately, it is difficult to divorce myself from the technical aspects of working in, in that field. And if I see something, it's worth it. I can't watch a foreign film without writing English dialogue in my head, because I've, I've written and directed so many scripts for foreign films being done in New England. Same thing with games. It's, uh, that reading could have been better. Ah, no, bad game design. I can't get into it. And uh, it's honestly, truthfully, I don't. I would probably enjoy it, but it takes me back to, uh, I think it's the Star Trek IV film, The Voyage Home, the one with the whales in space. <coughs> When uh, Kirk gets asked, you know, oh, so you're from outer space? No, I just work there. <laughs> I'm from Iowa. I work in outer space. We're, we're the same way. We're from the Midwest. We work in outer space. <laughs> Thank you. The water fairy just came. Thank, Thank you. you. Wow, this is cool. <laughs> uh, you know, it really, we'll get into this again at the master class tomorrow, but what he's saying is actually extremely true. Uh, the more you're into this business, the more you realize it's like, any of you guys ever work for a magician? No, I'm serious. You work for a stage mag magician? If you like magic, for God's sake, don't work for a magician. I mean, if you like the illusion, if you like the technical stuff, then work for the magician. But if you just like to go, ooh, cool, how did he do that? Don't find out. <laughs> because as soon as you do, the magic is gone. Yeah. And that happens with actors a great deal. You'll you know, spend we, the rest of your life admiring technique, but the magic is gone. 
Oh, not totally. 